This is the sign at Edgewater Station, which seems to have white writing. Edgewater Station was one of the original stations to open in the Joondalup Line in 1992, on the 20th of December. It is located 23 kilometers from Perth, serving the suburbs of Edgewater, Heathridge, Belden and Woodville. In 2010, a new canopy was built for the station, and in 2015, construction started on a new multi-level car park, which would cost $26 million. It opened on the 22nd of January 2017, increasing the station's parking capacity to 1,450. Even though the station has this big car park, it is still one of the most simple on the Joondalup line, with a bridge going across the Mitchell Freeway to a small platform which doesn't even have escalators. The station is also not connected to any bus routes. I am now crossing Mitchell Freeway southbound as I have come from the smaller exit to the station, which connects onto a side street. It is only used by residents of Heathridge within walking distance of the station. In this central section, you can take the stairs, lift or ramp down to the platform. As soon as you come down the stairs, there is a ticket machine here, as well as some open station smart rider processors. Come round to the back, and there is an information board, along with another ticket machine behind this pillar. This one doesn't accept notes, however. You can see it blocked off down the bottom there on the right. Also here is the defibrillator for the station, and this graffiti on the side of the stairs, which is purposefully here. Another announcement for the train that's about to arrive on platform 2 at this simple island, with those signs pointing them out on the right. Over here, under this semicircular roof, there's actually quite a lot of seating, three rows of it, and also a few bins. And then down here is where the bottom of the ramp is, if you choose to take that. Don't know why you would when you've got a lift, it's just long and winding, unless you want to come to down this side of the platform. There's also a smart rider processor there. Then in this little tiny mm, narrow way, there is this plaque commemorating the, open of the opening of the station in 1992, as I said before. And then back out the other side. This is the northbound platform for Butler, which is now uncovered from here on. At the end of the platform there's just a little planter box with a few bushes in it, but there's nothing much else here. Just another smart rider processor on the left if you want to take the stairs on this side up onto the ramp, right here. Oh, and there you can also see the big car park. Why don't we go and take a look at it now? Quite colorful too. Okay, let's go all the way up the ramp now. And here you can see you get really close to the electricity high voltage wires for the trains on the left. Quite scary them being this close to you. If you touch them, just instant death. The gate here on the side is a bit higher and slanted as you can see, but that's not gonna help. And then we come right under the roof again, very close to the top of the roof and back to the central section where we were before.
all this tactile paving on the ground here to guide people around. Here is the lift, which is quite old and clanky. Let's call it up. Here he is. Nothing much in here, just this rusty go button, which works only half of the time. And that's back down the stairs where we started, where we went down before, but we're not going down there. Let's go down towards the main entrance now, across this bridge. Here's a good place to play crossy road with the cars on the freeway. Once they pass, we'll run across and try not to die. Run! Oh, that one nearly hit us. Oh, another one on the exit ramp for Ocean Reef Road. And there we go, we're across. And also there's another PSP down the bottom there, as well as the one where we started the walk on the other side, on the side street. Here's a good view of the station from the bridge. And then the bridge just curves around and, sl and slopes down. And then it splits here, you can go left, down the stairs into the old car park, the ground level one. So let's go down there. Nothing much here, just behind the Jutenlop gate. Shopping area, it's not a shopping center, it's more industrial. I mean, it's not industrial, but just like warehouses. And over here, there's also a little small motorbike shelter on the left, but nothing is parked in there right now. And that's just the entirety of this car park. Let's turn around and go to the garage now. A few parking machines here. Looks like they've changed all the signs now to say free. They only had it paid for a while, like a year, and then it just got back to free after the COVID. Or it actually, it was like two or three years. Anyway, now the second way down from the ramp, instead of the stairs, you just keep going down the ramp. On the right side there's a bike shelter and there's also a phone booth here and over there you can see some short-term car parking signs because yeah there's a little short-term car park for pickup because there's no bus connection so you're probably gonna need a carpool there's some random seating here i don't know who would sit right here next to the road and crossing look both ways oh yeah that was worth it there's a car or the speed buttons, but um, and across the road. And then here on the left are two much more modern modern lifts than the one that's on the station. This is the ground level, it's like orangey and beige poles. Just a boring car park. You can also go up these stairs to get to the higher levels. So let's go up here. This is level one. The poles here are red. There's even some parking machines up here, actually. Nothing much different. It's all exactly the same. And here's the colored bars that we saw from the platform down there before. Oh look, a train's here right now. Let's watch that pull in. Oops, sorry about the finger there. Six car set heading for Butler and the noisy Mitchell Freeway right there. Okay, we don't need to see it depart. There is there it is at the station and the glaring sun. Let's get back to the lifts.
here they are. Let's call one up now. Or down wherever it's coming from. Will it be left or right? Take a guess. It's the left. In we go. This one's much more modern, as I said. With sensors and everything. Level 2 now. Doors closing. Up, up, up. Level 2. And out into the top level. Which of course does not have a roof, like all parking garages on the top left. Some emergency button there. But nothing much else here. Oh look, it's all empty. No one decided to park up here. Today. Or they've already all left. Anyway. Let's go down there and see where the car entrance is to up here. So here it is, there's a little staircase on this side as well, I don't know why you'd use that though, like just walk to the main exit anyway, it's usually full of spiders and cobwebs anyway because no one uses them. And then here is the train, I mean car entrance, talk too much about trains, actually there's one coming right now so, there it is, departing the station. Or Perth, another six car set. There were six car sets during this time. Through the trees there. Off it goes. Here it has to actually put down its pantograph as it goes under the ocean reef bridge. Maybe the bridge is like too low and the electricity and it's not good, like too risky for the pantograph to hit it or something. I don't know, but it always gets really quiet in the train when it passes that section. Okay, here's the ramp down. I shouldn't really be here. This is for cars. Let's get back. And there's also two other staircases from up here. You can see it down there on the right corner. And another one over there. Let's get back to the main entrance. This car park seems pretty weird. Because it's at Edgewater Station, which is only for, I mean, I guess, since you can't come by bus, then you come by car, yes. But it would just make more sense at a congested station like Whitforce. Or maybe that's just me. Anyway. Oh yeah, they're also planning to build one of these at Mandura. Or planning, I think they've already started construction. So here we are now at the front. Walk past here. Maximum clearance for the car park is written up here. 2.2. Very... Uh, what's it called? Short. And there's also a meter for how many cars are in there, how many spaces are free. 252 on the ground level. I don't know how accurate that is. Doesn't seem like there would actually be that many. And then here it also says how many are in the upper levels. Because if you want to access those upper levels, you have to go at this roundabout down there towards the right. This entrance here where the maximum clearance sign is only for the ground level. You have to go all the way down there to that green shed, which was the old site of Bunnings, but now it's moved a few mm, kilometers north. See, upper level 603. That's quite a lot. I mean, the whole top story was empty, so. And then over here is Latitude. So, if you want to come to Latitude, Edgewater Station is the one for you. Let's walk over here. And here's the car park for Latitude. Very small. They should allow you to just park in the multi-story one. Then that one would be used. Because it's like hardly used. And then it would trade off. Instead of um, squeezing in here. On session times. But only transport customers are allowed. Like at all transport stations. And then over here is a traffic light. Which is mainly just used by cars entering the station. Unless you're going to Latitude or the Junlop Gate, maybe. But it's mainly just for that. Pedestrians as well, but hardly anyone. Let's cross green light and cyclist. 
design because this is also another PSP, so a third PSP for the station on the most eastern side. And let's cross them around here. And here is actually where the train replacement bus stops for the station are located, right here. There is no, as I said at the start of the video, there is no other buses here. So this is just the stop for train replacements, which is quite far away from the station, but I guess it's closer to the houses, houses so it's okay. And the other one on that side, we have to go to the traffic light to cross over, it's quite dangerous. And that's the end now. There's nothing else to see here at the small uh, Edgewater station. There's the station sign right at the front of the traffic light. So people in the main Dunlop Drive here can see where the entrance is. The station gets a rating of three stars, as it's really down from some of the standards of other Dunlop Line stations, with no bus connections, no transit officers on site, no sh um, escalators, not a very convenient shelter, quite small, apart from the canopy above the seating. The only thing that brings it up is the car park which other stations should have too. But anyway, let's quickly look at some train clips now. Stop at all stations to Perth.